Well, hello everyone. This is Courtney Hamp with Opeachy, and this is the first video in what will probably be a three video series on how to build your own e-commerce store. I'll be doing a live walkthrough as I build one so you can follow along. Let's take a quick look at the goals of this video series. So goal number one is to introduce you to WooCommerce and WordPress. You've probably heard of WordPress because it's the most popular content management system around at the moment, but I will give you an introduction briefly to what it is, as well as its e-commerce functionality that exists in WooCommerce. And through this video series, I want to give you an understanding of the process of building a simple online store. It's not going to be a, a full overview of every possible feature, but it will give you a good starting point if you want to build your own. And I want to make sure you have the, an understanding of the tools you will use. WordPress uses plugins and themes and it can get kind of confusing. So I want to equip you with a basic understanding of the tools that will be used inside the store so you can start selling your own products and services. And finally, the overarching goal is to expand the options available to you to make a living, whether it be online or in complement to something that you're doing in person. So this is just to give you options. Here is a little bit of an overview on the resources that we'll be using. I will provide links to the resources that I use on this video on opeachy.com with the video in the post. So here are some details that we have to have in order for a website to work. You need to have web hosting. I will not be walking you through the process of getting web hosting. It's my hope that you probably already have it with your current business. But if you don't have web hosting, I'll provide a couple links to hosts that I like. It is very easy to get. You'll just walk through and, and get web hosting from the host. It's not, uh, not super difficult. Same thing goes for a domain name. If you don't already have a domain name, I will provide a resource where I like to buy them and you are welcome to buy a domain name there. We will be using WordPress, which is freely available on most hosts. And if it is not on the host you choose or the one you have, it is available to download. So we'll be using WordPress as our content management system where we'll be building the website. We'll also be using WooCommerce, which again, WooCommerce is free. It is downloadable through WordPress and also from WooCommerce.com. We'll be using a theme to make the site look how we want it to look. There is a free theme that comes with WooCommerce called Storefront. And that theme is very good if you want to just quickly put together a basic store that doesn't have a ton of customization for your business. So if putting together this store is just kind of a stopgap, something that you need to have up real quick, and then you're gonna be taking it back down after you know, business operations resume in the way they used to be, Storefront might be a good option. I will be doing this demo with Astra. I'm going to try to do the demo with the free version of Astra. I've been working with the pro version of Astra for quite some time. So I don't quite remember off the top of my head what restrictions I might run into with the free one. So if I do, we'll run into them together and we'll take a look at what's necessary. But for now, I'll try it with the free version so that you have that option. There will be other plugins that we'll use to add functionality to the store. And I will walk you through how to use a plugin, how to add them. And if possible, all of the demonstration plugins I use will be free ones. If not possible, as we go along, I will give you the links to the paid version so you can choose whether or not you want to use it. So that is the set of resources we'll be using. Might add to that list as we go along. But let's go ahead and jump in and get started on our first e-commerce store build. All right, I have logged into my web host here. I'll be doing this site build on a demonstration server that I have. So I've logged into the back end. This is uh, what we call cPanel. A good many hosts have a cPanel that'll look identical or very similar to this. It's, it's a standard software that a, that a lot of hosts use. Not everyone does. Um, if you have GoDaddy, which I would advise against just because they give you a lot of problems as far as site speed and stuff like that, um, you'll, you'll see a different look than this. But they still have the similar features and most every host will have something that looks 
similar to this, you'll see some recognizable features. But in the cPanel setup, I wanted to just go through the entire installation of WordPress. There are some hosts that when you buy the hosting, they install WordPress for you. That's the only thing they host. So when you buy the hosting, they, they install it. The hosts that I'll have listed in the post where this video is posted will not be that type of host. They'll be like this with the cPanel. So you'll be able to kind of follow along exactly with this video. We're gonna scroll down here and look for the Softaculous Apps Installer and just walk through their process for a WordPress install. I wouldn't normally do an install this way, but this is the easy way. There is a, there is a much cleaner way to do it if you are into kind of writing a little bit of code and comfortable with uploading files. If you are that person, go ahead and look up the five minute WordPress install. It's a nice clean way to do it and you get a very clean version of WordPress. But for most purposes, this type of install is just fine. So we'll click the WordPress install here. Feel free to pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast and you'll be able to catch up. Most of this we'll leave alone. We do want it to be HTTPS for security. We're collecting people's information on our store, so we do need it to be secure. And we're going to choose a subdirectory. This is the domain that I have on this demo server, but we're gonna choose a subdirectory to put this in. So I had one written down here that I would use. So I'm just copying and pasting it in from a, another document. And this will just put it in stagingmy.site forward slash WC demo site. So that will be the main URL of this store. And we can leave these things right now. The site name and site description, we'll change them later. And we definitely want to choose a different username and password than what we have here. Admin, stay away from that. That's what people will use all the time to try to hack into a site. So avoid the admin username. Let's, uh, let's just put something like this in here. And then I will put a new password in. That looks good. Make sure you save your username and password somewhere else and give yourself an admin email. I don't know, whatever, whatever it needs to be. I'm just gonna leave this here because I won't need to be receiving emails from this site. But the admin email you put here is where your messages from the store will go. So if somebody places an order, the email address you put here is where they will go. So go ahead and make sure that's a real one. Again, this is just a demo, so I don't really care where they go. And this type of plugin setup here will vary depending on your host. I tend to avoid installing any of those. They're not necessary. And if you wanna get technical, you can adjust these database info, but again, we won't, we won't go into that. And like I mentioned in the introduction, we'll be using an Astra theme, so no need to go through here and select the theme. Let's go ahead and click Install and see if we missed any data. Looks like that worked. So I would copy your URL and your login page, your administrative URL, somewhere safe so you don't forget those. Especially this one, it's going to be your domain name forward slash WP admin. So you can see here we have staging my.site, WC demo site forward slash WP admin. And that is how we're going to log in to the website to begin making changes. Let's go ahead and try it. The first bit that we'll be doing is installing the plugins and add-ons that are necessary. And I think the very first most important plugin that we need is the ability to back up the site. So if along the way we make a big mistake and screw something up, which is kind of hard to do in WordPress, but it can happen, uh, we will have the ability to go back and kind of reset without losing everything. So that is where we'll start. Let's do a plugin install. So I click plugins, installed plugins. I could have just clicked add new, but we'll click it here, add new. And a good backup plugin that does manual backups pretty easily is Updraft Plus. So we'll just do a quick look here. This one right here, this plugin is what we're gonna be using. You can use whatever backup plugin you want if you're familiar with one that you like. But I find this one's pretty easy to use, pretty user-friendly, and it is 
and it has a lot of options. The free version is great, the paid version is even better. So let's do a quick install of that plugin. As you'll see so far, WordPress is pretty friendly. We haven't had to jump around and do much of anything with the code, so that is nice. And we'll go ahead and activate this plugin. All right, now Updraft installs itself in the settings. So this is kind of your admin menu on the left here. And if you go over to settings, there are a lot of them for the site, but we'll go right here to Updraft plus backups and click that. And backing up your site is as simple as clicking backup. Now, I believe in the free version, you can set it up to do a scheduled backup. So maybe you wanna do a backup every day and keep three or four of them. And maybe the same thing with your database. The database would be where order information is saved. Files would be where all of your pictures and other uh, plugins and things like that that make up the file system of WordPress are saved. So it might not be a bad idea to do both of them daily. If your store is getting a lot of traffic, you can do it more often. And that'll just back it up on your server so you don't want to keep too many copies or you'll fill up your host depending on the size of your hosting plan. But for now, we will go ahead and do that setting. We'll save these changes. And let's do a backup now. We'll include the database, include the files, and backup now. So it's going to go ahead and, and start requesting the backup. It's a pretty small site, so it's already done. And here we are. Here is our backup. So if something goes horribly awry and the front end of the site stops working, you can go in here and restore the site. If it's totally broken and you can't get into the site, all of these files will be on your web host and you can download them and, and restore from there. This video is not going to cover site recovery like that, but there are lots of directions on Updraft Plus and many other places where you can walk through a site recovery. Hopefully you'll never need it, but the backup's there in case you do. All right, so next up, let's install, I'm trying to think what order I wanna do this. Maybe we'll install the theme first. There are a few themes that come with the site. This is the active theme that we have. These are themes from WordPress. So they WordPress builds these and, and includes them with the WordPress install. They are great for debugging. So if you make some changes and all of a sudden certain features stop working, go ahead and go back to one of these default themes and turn off your plugins and you can kind of see, okay, is the site acting up or was it a theme, or was it a plugin? But I will be adding a new theme. And like I said, we'll be using Astra. This one right here. We'll click Install and Activate. Now, if you want to do a really survivable site, something that has a lot of editability beyond what I'm going to show you in this video, I recommend you look up child themes. It's a great way to be able to edit some of the code on the site without that breaking every time the theme gets updated. All right, we have our theme installed and I wanna show you just a little bit about what this does. Now we don't really have a lot of content on the site. We don't have our products, we don't really have any posts, but there is a little bit that is installed with the site. So this is the theme that it came with, this 2020, and we're gonna activate that theme and take a look at the front end of the site. So if you go up here to my blog and we go to visit site, I'm gonna open that up in a new tab. This is what the site looks like right now with the default theme it came with. And if we go back over here to Astra and we activate that, now Astra is activated, we'll refresh the page and we see a different look. The reason I use Astra for something like this is it's a very clean layout and it's a lot easier to start from a clean layout and begin customizing forward than it is to have a bunch of different things that you have to figure out. Why is it this color? Why is it that color? Astra is a very nice, clean and simple layout to work with for, for building a basic store. Now, we want to try to avoid code as much as possible. So I want to show you a plugin I use all the time. Again, I use the pro version of it, but I believe the free version will do 
everything we need, or at least most of what we need, and we'll be able to survive without the uh, without the pro version right now. So let's go back to plugins. I've clicked plugins here, and it just took me to the installed plugins. I could have hovered over it and clicked add new, like I mentioned before. And we're going to search for Elementor. There are a lot of add-ons for Elementor. This right here is the main page builder. There are some starter templates if we want to use those with Astra. We might, we might consider looking at those just to see if that can give us a layout that we want really quickly. It's kind of a fun way to grab a default layout that looks nice. But let's go ahead and install this page builder so that you can use that if you want to style any pages. And I will show you how to so we'll activate that page builder. And if you want to, you can watch this video or follow their steps to create the first page. And there is a full user guide. I will not be doing that in this video, but you are welcome to if you install Elementor like we're doing here. And one other thing that I would like us to install, actually maybe two other things before we get started. So we're kind of putting together our toolkit here. Let's add a security plugin. Just in case people try to get into your site, we can drop a security plugin in here to help keep other people's data safe. So if people have placed orders, their information is on your site, we want to give it a best effort to keep things safe. So let's put in a security plugin. A good free one is WordFence. This guy right here, there is a paid version, which is really awesome. But as you can see here, they have over 3 million installs and really, really good reviews. I like to use them a lot. Let's go ahead and install that. And like I said, the, the free version is very robust and does most of what you need. Just waiting for that to activate. And it's gonna kind of give us some info here. It, this is where it will send you alerts. So again, this should be your admin email where you can get alerts in case somebody does try to break into the store. You'll have a heads up, hey, somebody's trying. And you can do things about that if you want. We don't want the, the email letter. And we'll agree to their privacy policy and continue. There is a lot of setup you can do within WordFence, but the default settings are pretty solid for just getting into this. And then if you want, you can read all about the different settings available, but we'll leave it alone for now. All right, let's clear out these two plugins that are default installed. So we'll delete those and delete this one. Again, I'm doing this live, so feel free to fast forward if this is going too slow for you or pause it and catch up if I'm going too fast, just kind of wandering through the process here together. Now this is going to be an e-commerce store, so we need the e-commerce functionality. Let's grab WooCommerce. Like I said earlier, this is the free plugin that gives you store functionality inside WordPress. And here it is. Again, there are a lot of other pieces to be added. There are a lot of free, free plugins, a lot of paid plugins. I think that this one is one I've used before because it does some nice PDF invoices and I believe the free version is pretty solid on that. You can take this Stripe gateway and use that. I think the paid version is quite a bit more reliable. But anyway, let's just do WooCommerce right now. And we'll install that plugin. I know it looks like we're going crazy installing a lot of plugins here. For an e-commerce store, you do have to have several to make the store work really well. But keep in mind that the more plugins you have, the slower your site can potentially run. There can be conflicts between plugins. So don't go nuts just installing every plugin because there are hundreds of thousands of them. Try to be judicious. Make sure the plugin you're installing is, is good for what you're doing and that you can't do what you're trying to do with something you already have installed. So let's go ahead and activate WooCommerce here. Now this is going to take us to a setup screen for WooCommerce, which maybe I'll walk through here just so you can see what it's about. There's a couple setup wizards here that you can do. Let's use the old one. All right, so let's pick our 
store location and pick whatever you want. And I will go ahead and fill out this info here. I think I can get away without the address for the moment. All right, and we'll do US dollar and we'll sell physical and digital products. And right now I will not check this box to sell products or services in person. There are some point of sale features you can get to add into WooCommerce, but we won't be covering that in this demonstration. And then we would click let's go and continue forward. You know, as I, as I look at this, maybe we want to go through each of these in the back end of WordPress and WooCommerce instead of in their little tutorial here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and skip this right now. Here's the setup wizard if you want it again. And if you want WordFence to stay up to date automatically, you can, we'll tell it no thanks for now. But that brings us to the discussion of updates. You do need updates from time to time. They are for security, they are for interoperability, a lot of reasons that you need to get your updates regularly. So I recommend doing them once a week, back up your site, do the updates. So we'll do a quick check. It says we have five here. So let's see what is really there. Looks like WordPress is available. Plugins are up to date and a lot of these old themes need updates. So let me just show you kind of how that works. WordPress, it's as simple as clicking update now. I recommend going into Updraft Plus and doing a backup before you do an update. We just did a backup and this is a new site, so there's not really anything here to lose. We'll go ahead and do an update on WordPress. If you try to go to the site while this update is happening, you'll get a maintenance page that it's not, uh, not operational. That's what this enabling maintenance mode link is. All right, and an introduction to 5.4. If you're interested, read through it. We will not be doing that right now. So let's jump back over. There were updates here. I think they were to those themes that WordPress sends with the site. Yes, so these are all the WordPress themes. Once you have your site built and working well, feel free to go ahead and delete most of these. Maybe just leave the 2020 on here so you can use that for testing later, but or you can delete all of them and install one later if you need it for testing. You don't wanna leave a bunch of themes sitting around, but for right now, we'll leave them and we'll just update the themes. Let's go ahead and get rid of this banner from Astra as well. And we can see here, all of those have been completed. So we are up to date. We have our WooCommerce installed, we're ready to add products and so on. So let's just take a quick look at how to build our site architecture and get set up for a store. The first thing we wanna do is create our home page. So we have that. There is a demo privacy policy that gets built when you install WordPress. I do recommend that you fill that out, speak with your favorite legal representative to make sure you do it right. I cannot give advice on what to put in the privacy policy, but it's important to have when you're selling stuff online. And this sample page is provided as part of the install as well. Let's just open that up in a new tab so we can take a look. And here is the sample page. It just has some basic info on it to show you kind of how the text editor in WordPress formats information. Of course, we're looking at it through the lens of the Astra theme. This would look differently on a different theme. So this is kind of our content area. This is our sidebar area over here, our menu, and our site title or logo space. So let's go ahead and add a page for our homepage here. and we'll name it home. There we go, we now have a home page. If we go over here, you can see there are a few different settings to adjust. As we go through this build, depending on the style that we come up with, we might come in here and adjust some of these, but it's okay to go ahead and just give it a title and save this page as a draft. Or if you're feeling really, really excited, you can click publish and it will exist live. But what I want to introduce you to is the Elementor editor that we installed with uh, when we were doing all the plugins. 
So this is what you call a, what you see is what you get editor or WYSIWYG, and it allows us to drag and drop our site layout. To do this, or to use a plugin like this, you kind of want to have a slight idea in your mind of what a site should look like. If you don't have an idea, go look at another site that sells something similar to what you're selling and you'll have an idea really quick. I have not sketched out anything for this site, so we're gonna do this kind of freestyle. But let's add ourselves a section. We can do columns, okay? You can lay this out in all sorts of columns. A lot of times it's, it's fun to do just a large header section here. So there's the new section we just added. And it looks like our content is boxed. What that means is the page may be this width, but our content is going to be maxed at a certain point. I think the default is 1200 pixels. We can set that to whatever we want. There we go, just because that's a fun number. I, if you don't set a number there, it will use whatever the default is. From here, let's go ahead and add ourselves some content. So maybe we want to add a heading. Add a heading here. And perhaps, let's go ahead and make it a, a full heading. And perhaps we want to add a subheading below it. There's our heading, there's our subheading, and maybe we go ahead and grab a button to take people to the store. I'm just showing you kind of a little bit of a page layout. I won't get into a bunch of style on this site. I want you to know how to use the tools, and then you can take them and build them to be however you want. So here's a button that we've added. We could link this to our store here in a minute. I have to create the store page first, but we'll have the button and we could name this shop now. All right, so there's our button. Let's make it large and let's go ahead and center our button. And perhaps we do the same with our text. And center our text. Again, I'm going through this live, just clicking through. So if I go through something a little too fast, just pause the video and scroll back and you can watch it again as many times as you want. So we have this, it's a little bit bland right now, and we can adjust the colors and such as we see fit. I'm not going to do a ton of color adjustments on this demonstration because again, I wanna give you the tools to do this, but not, not really bore everybody with a bunch of details. But we can adjust the colors if we want. We could grab a different text color here. That looks fun. And do the same thing here. Jump into the style. There we are, maybe we make that blue or green. Green is fun, kind of like our button here. And same thing with the button. Buttons have a lot more stylability. You can change the color of the text, which is currently white. You can change the background of the button, which is some sort of green. But you can also change what it does when you hover. So maybe you want them to reverse. Maybe you want the text to be green and the background to be white when people hover. You can change that here. So give the button a little bit more dynamic feel. But we can also edit the background here. There's a little right click functionality if you want it to edit this section, but just by clicking this little back, this little container icon, we can get into the background of this entire header section. And for, for your store, it could be any, any height that you want. I think that it can be fun to have a minimum height. So you kind of have like a, a banner here, 400 pixels is fun. And then you can put maybe a image or a video behind here. I don't have an image or video saved for this at the moment. So let me show you where we might get an image because you'll probably be in the same spot. Pexels.com is a great place. And we can pick any sort of background image here. So let's just grab something that looks cool. Just go with this one here. And we will save this file. So the, the original file is really large. I don't think we need anything that size. You can slow down your page if you have too many large files. So let's just do a, a basic image here. Grab that. 
and free download. All right, and we will put it here with our files for this project. And pop on back to give ourselves an image. We're here editing the, the header section and we want to give it a little bit of style. Background is a classic background or a slideshow. We're going to do just a classic background and right now leave the color white, but we're going to choose an image. And we just downloaded this, so I'll drag it right up there and drag and drop. And there is our image. We'll insert that. All right, so now we can make some decisions about our actual colors here as to what goes over the image well. But let's take a look a little bit of the features here. We could maybe center the image and we could have it cover or be contained. You see there, it kind of repeats itself if we, if we tell it to do that, unless we turn repeat off. I think we will do cover, that's good for now. But it looks like this image is kind of busy. So maybe we'll make use of the background overlay to give it a little bit of kind of dim it down a bit. There we go. We can adjust that slider as to how intense we want that to be. We'll make it that for now. And let's go back, just click on this text here and let's change that to something else. There we go, now we can see it. Maybe this could be white as well. Yeah, white is better. Okay, and maybe we could change the size of that a little bit. Cool, so now we have a header section. And we repeat that down the page. So now we pick another section and write what we want. So we're building the, the home page out here. I think we will stop with this page right now because one of the best things about an e-commerce store is once you build your products up, then you can kind of pull them into the, into the home page dynamically. So I think that would be a better idea is to have the products and be able to just kind of showcase those right here on the home page, at least the, the latest products or something like that. So we'll go ahead and publish this page as is. Publishing it just makes it so it's visible to somebody that's not an admin on the site. It's not sending it out anywhere. So not a scary thing to do. And we can take a look at what our page looks like. There we go. We didn't add anything extra, so this is just our, our header. Welcome to the store. We haven't adjusted any of this information up here, but you will see that home is added in addition to sample page to the menu. If you don't have a menu set, which I'll show you how to set later, the pages you add will show up here. The, any, any page you add will show up here in the menu. Uh, there may be a limit. I haven't tested that because I always set a menu of my own, but it'll, it'll add up there. So down the road, we'll set a menu of what exactly we want to have up there. A lot of times we'll have an about page, a contact page, the home page, and maybe the store or shop page, maybe a shopping cart, something like that. But that is what we have there. And let's go ahead and take just a quick tour of the other features in the back end before we wrap up this first video. And you can, if you haven't been following along live, you can go ahead and get started on your install. So we'll go here, click this icon to go to the back end. Once we're in the front, we just, this is how you jump back and forth. So if you click this when you're in the back end, it takes you to the front and vice versa. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the difference between posts and pages first. So this is where we were to create pages. Pages are your main content areas on the site. Whereas posts, a little bit more sequential. They are dated, they tend to be available to show in like a series. So you would use posts for things like a news about your store. So if you have information about new products that are coming in, you would put those here to kind of tell people about whatever news is necessary for your store. So that would be here in the posts and then you can choose a page to put the posts on. So let's see here if we, we can just show a demo of what that looks like. This is what, uh, this is the blog functionality of WordPress. And we're not gonna use the Elementor for posts. It's good for pages. It's fine for posts, but it's not necessary. Publish that post. And let's add one more.
and we'll publish that. You can do a lot more for posts. You can add images, you can add whatever you want. In the document settings here, you can change the URL that the post has. So you can make that say whatever it needs to be, or if you're into SEO, you can change that. You can put a featured image in, which we won't be doing, but there's a lot you can do to make a post look really awesome. Just go through these settings on the, on the right-hand side, as well as adding content with the content editor here. But right now, I just wanted to show you what posts do because we've created these posts. Now, if we go back, we'll have three posts here. We'll have the initial post, Hello World, Demo 1 and Demo 2, currently organized based on when they were published, newest at the top. Now, if we go over here to Pages and add a new page, we can quickly create a blog. Just put a title on it, publish it. Now we have our blog page. Let's connect the posts to the page. There we go. Home page currently is displaying the latest posts. Let's set the home page to be home and post page to be blog. There we go. Save these changes. And let's take a look at that blog page we just created. There we are. So now we have those posts in descending order based on newest first to oldest last. So this is how we've created now a blog and the posts show up on a page. So that's kind of a hierarchy. People can click on a post and view it by itself if they want. If you have comments turned on, you can, you can use that. But anyway, this is kind of how the posts and pages are related. There's more you can do with them and Elementor lets you put posts anywhere on any page. You don't have to have them just on the blog page. Not going to get that deep into it. This is a basic store, but there is a lot you can do with that relationship between posts and pages. Let's go ahead and exit to our dashboard here from the page builder. And I wanna just show you where we're going to go next. And I'll, do, I'll go into these places on the next video. But we'll take a peek here. This is the WooCommerce dashboard. This is where we're going to be able to look at our store performance. So once you sell things, you're going to have full reporting back here. This, under products, is where we have all of our, all of the products that we're listing on the site. And we don't have products right now, but we can either run the setup wizard, which we skipped to begin with, or we can create a product. Creating a product is a lot like creating a post. I will cover that in a future video because there's a lot to cover when, when you're creating a product as far as the options of things you can do. But for now, I think that's a good stopping point. If you follow along, by the time we get to the next video, you will have a site set up and ready to start making your own products. You might have played around with the style a little bit and built a homepage, but I hope you enjoyed this first video and I will see you on the next one. 